Now that you've learned a little bit about cookies, I want to get our hands dirty within a Flask application and some explicit cookies to illustrate uh, a few things about the way they work and when they're passed between the browser and the server. So here I've built just a small application and it has a single function, a single handler at the root path. And within this function, let's look at what I'm doing. The first thing I do is I set a variable called count equal to the result of uh, this expression. Let's kind of break this down into pieces. This internal piece, request.cookies.get, that asks for uh, a cookie of the name visit count from the request. So just like we can get things out of the request from the query string using request.args or from the body of a post request using request.form, I can also access um, a dictionary called cookies within the request object. And by saying .get, I will ask for the thing with key visit count. And then if I give it a second parameter, recall that this will um, give us the value zero if that key does not exist within the dictionary. So if the first time I come in here, if there has not a cookie been set with the name visit count, this, uh, this call will return a zero. If there is a visit count cookie, that'll give us the value of that cookie. That cookie value will always be a string. Cookie values are always strings, so I have to convert that to an integer. So that's what count is. On the next line, I just increment that. And then I build up a message telling the user that they have visited the page that number of times. So this cookie is just going to count how many times the given visitor has come to this page. Now down below, I do something a little bit different than we've done before. And this is, um, you know, again, we're not going to do this very much um, if, if ever again. We just want to do this to illustrate how cookies work. In order to build up a response where I can set a cookie in the response in Flask, I need to uh, get my hands on an actual HTTP response object, which I get by calling make response and passing it in the body of that um, of that response. Then I can set the cookie in the response and return the response. And notice that when I set the cookie, I convert that to a string because, as we said a moment ago, cookie values are strings. So let's go ahead and see how this this works by firing it up. Okay, notice that I'm in a private browser window. This is just so that I don't have any cookies uh, set to start off with. I can be sure that I'm starting fresh from scratch. Okay, so the first time I come to this page, I notice that I've visited it one times, right? So that's kind of what we would expect in the code. Uh, what happened during that first request is we asked for the cookie with visit count since there were no cookies. That was zero. On the next line, we incremented that to one, and then we told the user they have visited the page one time. Let's go ahead and open up our browser tools, browser developer tools here, and look at the network tab. And then I want to actually look at what's happening when cookies are passed back and forth. So if I refresh this now, I'll see that request in the network tab. I can click on it, and I can uh, kind of pull this over a little bit farther, give us some more room here. And I can see in the request and response headers the data associated with those cookies. So notice that when I made the request, it passed to the server a cookie with visit count equals one. That was set on the previous response. So whatever cookie is set in the browser for that domain will be passed up to the server on any subsequent, subsequent requests. Now, when that server came back, when that request from the server came back, rather, uh, I had visit count equals two. That then updated the value of the cookie to be equal to two. All right, and you can also see in the cookies tab, you can see uh, the request cookies and the response cookies kind of broken down a little bit more explicitly. But I think uh, seeing them in the headers here is, is, is a pretty good way to see it. That's exactly how the browser would see it. You can also see the raw headers and you can actually see uh, somewhere in here, there we go. Here's the cookie visit count equals one. And on the response side, we would see the set cookie header. So you can see that in the raw headers themselves or in this kind of more user-friendly breakdown um, on, on the cookies tab. So that's what's happening each time I refresh my page, is I will get an updated cookie each time, and that will update the cookie within my browser. And then uh, the next time I make a request, it sends that new updated value to the server, and then that value is updated, and so on. Okay? So cookies are, yeah, they're great. They, they allow us to keep information about a specific user by basically storing that information in the user's browser. Uh, one thing I want to show you about these cookies, though, is that they're accessible via JavaScript within the browser, which means that people can people can basically mess with your cookies if you don't uh, prevent them from doing so. So right now, this says that I've visited the page three times. If I come down to the console tab, and I'm just going to write a little bit of JavaScript. We don't expect that you, that you know JavaScript. I just want to kind of illustrate that people can, can do the things that I'm about to do, and it's something that as a programmer you need to be aware of, not that you necessarily need to you know know the JavaScript that I'm about to type. 
So if I type document.cookie, that gives me the, the cookies for the current domain, basically. So um, we see that I have that visit count cookie right there. Um, I can also set the cookie using a similar command. So if I came here and I set visit count equal to, oh, I don't know, 87, something crazy, and then I refresh the page, notice that that passed in the cookie to the server with the value of 87, and then when it came back, it was actually updated to 88. So, you know, if we're not careful and we don't do anything explicit, users can hijack our cookies and actually change the values. And even worse, in a case where our cookies are actually storing uh, maybe sensitive user data, they could JavaScript from a third party could send that data to a third party server potentially. So uh, we need to be aware of that. And so at the very least, we need to expect that users can change cookie values. We'll, we'll learn about something called cookie hashing in a future lesson, and that'll show us how we can uh, prevent these things from happening. So that's just a little bit about cookies. I'll post the uh, code from that little application example um, so you can look at it and play around with it if you like. Um, but that's that's how cookies work in Flask.